Hello, welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. Tonight we're going to play another game from the 1961 Red Sox season featuring the career of Carl Yastrzemski using inside pitch baseball. Carl Yastrzemski's rookie season. This is game number 33 of the Captain Carl's young career here. Red Sox would come into this game, well, come into this game with a 15 and 17 record. They were actually 14 and 18 coming in, so they won game ahead of their pace, and they did actually win this game 4 to 1. So they try to remain one ahead of their pace for the season and see what Yastrzemski can do. Yastrzemski was actually 3 for 3 in this game, and at the end of the day, he had a 254 average. So we'll have to. See. Currently, Yastrzemski has been struggling, although he has shown signs of coming out of it. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on Yastrzemski's stats, and uh, hopefully the Red Sox can get another victory here. And Ms. Mags is joining us here in the room. All right, as you can see, uh, Mambo Ket is on the mound because it's all a bunch of blank lines because there's not enough space for his name. <laughs> so Bill Mambo Ket on the hill for the Red Sox. He comes in with a 2-5 and five record on the season. 4.14 earn run average, 45 and two-thirds innings pitched. 52 hits allowed, 39 strikeouts and 12 walks. In the actual season, he was 14 and 14 with a 3.39 Aaron run average. So the lineup for the visiting Chicago White Sox is going to be Al Smith, the right fielder. He'll lead it off, followed by the Hall of Famer Nellie Fox, the second baseman, will bat next. Wes Covington is the left fielder, hitting third. Roy Seaver is the first baseman, will bat cleanup. Jim Landis, the center fielder, hits fifth. Batting sixth is Sherm Waller behind the plate. Third baseman J.C. Martin will hit seventh. The future Red Sox, Luis Aparicio, will play short and bat eighth. And Frank Bauman is on the mound, batting ninth. So behind Ma Boquette is going to be a Stremsky and left. Hardy and center, Jensen and right. Stremsky and Hardy average defensively. Jensen above average and right. And Jensen the most shorthanded of the three. Stremsky and Jensen both of the above average arms. And left and Right and Hardy and center with an average arm. The infield is Melzone, Button, Schilling, and Reynolds, all average range except for Schilling, who's above average. Uh, defensively, actually, that is not range. Um, Schilling, the most shorthanded at second base, and Reynolds just slightly behind him at first base. Button, Boot, and Button at short, the most error prone. And Jim Pagoni behind the plate with a above average range, but with extreme with the highest error rating you can get. And a below average arm. So Mambo Kid on the hill. Al Smith steps to the box. Smith comes in hitting 321 against the Red Sox this year. 278 on the actual season with 28 homers and 93 runs batted in. So Mama Cap looks in for the sign from Pagaroni as the wind up in the pitch. And he will strike out Smith to begin the game. Next up, one of the hardest men in baseball to strike out, Nellie Fox. Hit 251 on the season with two homers and 51 runs batted in. Steps in steps up to the plate. Here's the wind up in the pitch by Mambo Cat. And probably not going to be a strikeout. Nope. With the Fenway Park adjustment, it's a zero here. That's how tough he was to strike out. So it will not be a strikeout. And he'll fly out to Yastrzemski and left for out number two. So two up and two down for the White Sox. Brings up Wes Covington. Covington, 273 hitter on the season with 12 homers and 47 runs batted in. And Cat gets the sign and kicks and delivers. And Covington will draw the walk. So two out base runner for the White White Sox. Brings up Roy Seavers. Destroying Red Sox pitching so far with a four at a four forty four clip with a homer and seven runs batted in and, and this being his eighth game. Hit two ninety five for the actual season with twenty seven homers and ninety two runs batted in. Reynolds will hold on Covington at first. 
Well, Maquette working out of the stretch delivers. Does not get the strikeout. And Severs fights it off for a base hit. Covington holds at second. So two out rally for the White Sox here. Runners on first and second for Jim Landis. 283 hitter for the season on the season with 22 homers and 85 runs batted in. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be a base hit. Covington is being held at third, though. Not much speed for him. And the White Sox load the bases with two down. As Pagaroni goes out to talk to Mamboquette, trying to settle him down. Just trying to get the batter out and get him out of, get out of the inning with no damage. So Sherm Lawler, who's also destroyed Red Sox pitching so far this year. 450 clip with the home run six runs batted in. And this being his seventh game against the Red Sox. Hit 282 for the actual season with seven homers and 41 runs batted in. Mambo Kett looks in for the sign. Looks at the runners. Kicks and delivers. Oh, and that's going to be a base hit. And the runners move station to station. Right. Sherm Lawler gets an RBI single to put the White Sox on the board. J.C. Martin up now. Martin, 230 on the, for the season with five homers and 32 runs batted in. Does not get the strikeout. Oh, my goodness. And the two-out rally continues as he nails a double into the corner. Stremski picks it up. Fires to home. And throws out Lawler at the plate. But two more runs come across. And it's 3 nothing White Sox after one half inning. After the first two batters were retired by Mumble Cap. So Frank Bauman on the hill. He's had one start against the Red Sox. And he's made another appearance, I think. He's uh, pitched nine in the third innings against the Sox with a 1-0 record. Has allowed 11 hits, though. Two walks, uh, three walks and two strikeouts. 10-13 on the actual season with a 5.60 earn run average. 249 hits and 188 innings. Ouch. 75 strikeouts and 55 walks. So he is definitely hittable. Red Sox down by three. They'll have Schilling batting first. Chuck Schilling playing second. Carol Hardy is a center fielder today. Batting second. Kai Stremski, the rookie, the left fielder, hitting third. Jackie Jensen's batting cleanup, playing right. Jim Pagliaroni behind the plate, batting fifth. Frank Malzone, third baseman, having a fine season, bat sixth. Pete Reynolds, the first baseman, will bat seventh. Don Budden, the shortstop, hits eighth. And Bill Mamboquette will bat ninth. So the defense behind Bauman is going to be Covington, Landis, and and Smith. Covington awful range and awful defensively in left. Landis the most short-handed of the three in center. Martin Aparicio, Fox, and Severs. Aparicio, Gold Glove caliber at shortstop with a five rating. Everybody else average except for Severs, who's slightly below average. Lawler behind the plate is above average. Very sure-handed and slightly above average arm. Bauman, great range. Great uh, defensively and very sure-handed on the hill. So Schilling steps up. Schilling comes in hitting 250 on the season with homer and eight runs batted in. Here's the pitch by Bauman. It's going to be a Fenway Park check right away. And that will be a ground out to third. Martin up with it over to Severs for out number one. So one up and one down for the Red Sox. Carol Hardy comes in hitting 250 on the season with two homers and nine runs batted in. Bauman kicks and delivers. 
And that's going to be another ground ball to Martin. It's up with it over to Severs for out number two. And here's the man of the hour, Kai Yastrzemski. Got his average up over 200 now, 212, with three homers and 17 runs batted in. See what he can do with two outs and the base is empty. Ooh, Fenway Park check here, 6-6, six, six, and now it's going to be a ground ball to Fox. He's up with it over to Reynolds, and that'll do it for the Red Sox. So the Red Sox go in order in the first, and it remains 3-0 after one. I appreciate it. will lead it off. He's torn up Red Sox pitching so far. In seven games, he's hit 462 with two runs batted in. On the season, for the season, he hit 272 with six homers and 45 runs batted in. 6-4. So it's going to be another Fenway Park check. 2-1. Oh, ooh. Oh. So that is going to be, he has weak power. So that normally would have been a home run if he had regular power, but he has weak power. So against the righties, I guess. So that will be a fly out to left as Yastrzemski makes the catch. Bowman up now. Bowman 262 hitter. For the season to a very good hitting pitcher with two homers and ten runs batted in. Mabuquet kicks and delivers, and this time he'll strike out. So Mabuquet gets his second K of the day. So two up and two down for the White Sox in the second. Brings up Al Smith. He struck out his first time up. And he strikes out again. So Mabuquet gets him again. So ahead to the home half of the second with the Red Sox down by three. Jensen Pagliaroni Melzone up for the Red Sox. Jensen also off to a good start, hitting 343 with three homers and 19 runs batted in. Bauman looks in for the sign, nods his head, kicks and delivers, and that's going to be a leadoff walk. So the Red Sox get their first base runner. Brings up Pagliaroni. 323 hitter in the season. Five homers, 18 runs batted in. And he'll get a base hit. As Jensen is held at second. So that'll put runners, first two runners on for the Red Sox. First and second. Brings up the tying run. Frank Melzone. 365 on the season. with Five homers and 20 runs batted in. So he's off to a great start for the 1961 season. Ooh. I have three, and that's, ooh, single plus nine, nice. Uh, not nice enough, though. <laughs> so the Red Sox get on the board on the RBI single, but Malzone tries to stretch it into a double and is thrown out. So Malzone getting a little over-aggressive there. Smith throws him out. Pagaroni holds at third, so one out. Three to one game now. Pete Runnels up now. Also hitting over 300, 309, with three homers and 11 runs batted in. It's going to be a range play. And Martin will not be able to get to that one. And Pagaroni comes in, this trots in the score. And that's going to make it a 3-2 game now. As Runnels delivers with an RBI single. Pass to Dive Martin. Don Button up now. Red Sox is going to be doing a little hit and run here. Button also over 300, 327, with 11 runs bat in. So all the Red Sox hitters, except for yeah, Strumps, well, actually the first three hitters, the four, five, six, seven, and eight hitters, I think all hitting over 300. I believe that's what I saw. <laughs> So Bauman up now. I mean, uh, Button up now. With a hit and run. And that's going to be hit to Aparicio. Very short-handed. And he'll throw to first as the runner advances to second. So Runnels in scoring position, tying run in scoring position now for Mamboquette with a chance to help him help himself. Mamboquette hitting 143 on the season, looking for his first RBI. This would be a great time for it. And that will not happen as he grounds out to Seavers. 
But the Red Sox score two, and after two full, it's three to two White Sox. So it'll be Fox, Covington, and Seavers up against Mambo Cat here in the top of the third. Nope, very hard man to strike out. Does not strike out again. Said he'll fly out to center. Hardy's there to make the catch for out number one. Covington up now. Walked and scored in back in the first. And he strikes out. So Mambo Cat gets his fourth K of the day. It's two outs here in the Chicago third. Roy Seavers one for one with a run scored. And he'll pop one up to Schilling, who makes the catch for out number three. So head to the bottom of the third with the Red Sox down by a run. Top of the order, Schilling will lead it off. 0 for 1 today. He'll ground out to Abricio for out number one. Carol Hardy 0 for 1 on the day. Possible error here on a throw. And that will not be an error check as it sits to the outfield. So Landis makes the catch for out number two. So two up and two down for the Red Sox in the bottom of the third. Here comes Yastrzemski, 0 for 1. Possible error on the ground here, 3-6. And that's going to be a liner to Fox. And he makes the catch. The Red Sox go in order in the third. And we'll head to the fourth with the score Chicago 3 and Boston 2. Landis to lead it off. He's one for one with a run scored. Mambo Cat kicks and delivers. Lines this one to Schilling. Makes the catch for out number one. Sherm Lawler up now. Had an RBI single his first time up. Avoids the strikeout. And pops up to short. But it makes the catch for the second out. J.C. Martin, two-run double his first time out. Oh, does not qualify for the home run. His Mambo Cat, very stingy against the lefties. Only, only a 10% chance. Two, instead, he'll ground out to Button. I mean, to Malzone, who flips over to Reynolds for out number three. So we'll head to the Home half of the fourth. The Red Sox down 3-2. to two. Jensen to lead it off. Walked and scored his first time up. And he'll get a single off the pitcher's card. So Jensen on with a single. It's a good start for the Red Sox here in the bottom of the fourth. Going to bring up Pagaroni. One for one with a run scored. Does not get hit by the pitch. Instead, fights it off and flies out to left. Covington with the catch for out number one as Jensen hit, trots back to first. So Frank Malzone had an RBI single his first time up. Looking for another hit here. Will not get it. Gets under it just a bit and flies out to Landis for out number two. Pete Reynolds, RBI single his first time up. Give me a range play. And Fox will not be able to get to this one. Jensen motor off was off on the pitch with two down. Motors his way to third, so they'll put runners at the corner, so the tying run just 90 feet away for John Budden with a chance to tie the game here. 0 for 1. Ooh, possible wild pitch here. And it's gonna no, it's gonna be a pass ball, they call it on Lawler. And that will allow Jensen to come home with a tying run. So the Red Sox tie the game via the pass ball here. 3-3 three to three as Brunnels moves up in the scoring position. So Button with a chance to put the Red Sox ahead here. For another range play. And Covington will not be able to get this. Covington very poor range. Nobody would have got to that one. And that will fall in there. Runnels comes around the score.
And Button ties the game. I mean, uh, puts the Red Sox in the lead with an RBI single. That deserves a sip of coffee. The Red Sox pull ahead after starting out being down 3-0. So that brings up Mambo Cap. 0 for 1 on the day. And Mambo Cat's going to get himself a hit. Button also off on the pitch. We'll move to third, so runners at the corners. Top of the order, Schilling, 0 for 2. As Law goes out to talk to Baum and goes back behind the plate. And he will ground to Martin at third. Flips over to Seavers. The end of the inning. But the Red Sox take a 4-3 lead as we head to the top of the fifth. And I think we have do have a couple unearned runs here. Let's see if we can figure this out here. So Jensen scored on the pass ball. Let's see here. Does that make both those? I don't think that makes both those runs unearned. Uh, let's just say that pass ball didn't happen. So that loaded the bases. Loaded the bases with two down. Button singled. The one run comes in there. And Marble Cat singled. He probably would have scored there. So I'm going to say neither of these runs is actually unearned because they would have came around the score anyway. That's what I'm going to call. <laughs> I may be wrong on that play, but I'm just going to use my judgment to the best of my ability on that one. Sure, those of you who are watching it right now are probably saying, no, those are unearned. But I would think they would be, because they would have came around the score anyway. If it wasn't for the pass ball, because there were two singles after that. So I'm going to go with the earned runs there. So all right, so Aparicio will lead it off in the top of the fifth against Mamboquet now with the lead. Mambo Cat, 444 with two runs batted in against the Red Sox. I mean, uh, Aparicio, 444 with two runs batted in against the Red Sox. So he is 0 for 1 on the day. Oh, thankfully, well, Mambo Cat is great against the lefties, not so great against the righties at preventing home runs, but thankfully, Aparicio is not that great. A, does not have much power. But actually, it's still a chance, though. One for three will be a homer. Oh, 20. Not even close on that one, but... He'll, he'll fly out to Hardy for out number one. And that is going to be... Let's see what Bauman's got left in the tank here. Bauman's still got some stuff left, and he's a close game, so we'll keep him in. And again, he's a good hitter, so... Good hitting pitcher. He's a good hitter, period. He strikes out this time, though. So two outs now for L. Smith. He, he, still trying to figure out Mambo Cat as he struck out twice against him. And grounds out the short to end the inning. So halfway through, it's the Red Sox four and the White Sox three. I'm going back out on the hill. Hardy to lead it off. 0 for 2 on the day. He'll fly out to Covington for out number one. That brings up Yastrzemski. Looking for his first hit of the day. And he flies out to Smith and right. So two up and two down for the Red Sox in the home half of the fifth. Jackie Jensen. One for one with a walk and a run score, a two run scored.
Gets himself a base hit. So he's on with his second hit of the day. Paglaroni up now. One for two of the runs scored. It's going to be a range play. And Aparicio scoops this one up like a vacuum cleaner over to Seavers. And that'll do it for the Red Sox. So after five full, it's Boston four and Chicago three. Ron Boquette back out there for his sixth inning of work. He'll face Fox, Covington, and Seavers. Fox 0 for 2 on the day. Flies out to Jensen and Wright for out number one. Covington up now, 0 for 1 with a walk. Run scored. Grounds out to Button. Scoops it up over to Reynolds. Two down. Seavers, 1 for 2 with a run scored. Thankfully, he is a righty. <laughs> Two, five. Four, five. Fly ball to center. Hardy calls for it. And that'll do it for the White Sox in the top of the sixth. As we head to the bottom of the sixth, the Red Sox cling to a one-run lead. It'll be Melzone, Runnels, and Button. Melzone, one for two with an RBI. Button bowing back out there. Strikes out Melzone, really strikes out against the lefties, but does this time. So Button settling down. So 2-5. Pete Reynolds is 2 for 2. Possible error check here. Well, error check. No, nope, line drive to second. Fox makes the catch for out number 2. That brings up Button. It's likely to be the last batter for Bauman, regardless of what happens. And he draws the walk. So that'll be it for Budden. So let's see who are the White Sox going to bring in now. Kemmerer, Pizarro, or Alone were used. Let's go with Kemmerer, I guess. He was the next one brought in. So Russ Kemmerer comes in for the White Sox. 3-3 three and three record on the actual season. 4.36 earned on average. 97 innings pitched. 102 hits allowed. 25 walks and 35 strikeouts. So he'll face Mambo Kett here with two down. Hey, Miss Mags. Mags coming in and say hi. And that'll do it in the bottom of the sixth for the Red Sox. Uh, still 4-3 to three Boston as we head to the seventh. Mambo kept back out there. Still looking strong. Did pitch a complete game in this actual game for a victory. So he'll face Landis, Lawler, and Martin. Landis one for two with a run scored. And he'll fly out to Jensen right for out number one. Sherm Lawler one for two of the RBI. Ooh, possible home run here. Ooh, so we have it. One to eight will be a home run, so 40% chance, and this game will be tied. And gets a hold of one, and just out of the reach of Yastrzemski. Isn't it frustrating? How Whoops. Hold on. Can hit you with minimum. <laughs> every once in a while, this uh, baseball reference decides to play a video. <laughs> See if we can silence it up here. All right, silence that up. 
So Sherm Lawler ties it up with a solo shot. His second against the Red Sox. And we have a 4-4 game here. As there is action in the Red Sox pen. J.C. Martin, one for two with a double and two runs batted in. Oh, no, does not go back to back because he's a lefty. And two down now. As he flies, grounds out the short. Aparicio, 0 for two on the day. Aparicio also very hard to strike out. Grounds out to short to end the inning. So we'll head to the home half of the seventh, seventh inning stretch time here at Fenway Park. Take me out to the ball game, which we will not sing. And Kemmerer back out for his second inning of work. He'll face the top of the order. Red Sox order, Schilling, Hardy, and Yastrzemski. Tied at, game tied at four now. Schilling 0 for 3 on the day. Home run check for Schilling, though. Not much of a chance. It's out of the range of Kemmerer. So 3 2. Grounds out the third for out number one. Brings up Carol Hardy 0 for 3. Error check here. Five. Oh, and that's going to be a double and an error. So a double for Hardy and an error. One base error, and he'll move to third. So an error by Landis. Has the go ahead run 90 feet away. And Kali Stremski, the rookie, up to the plate. Can he deliver? 0 for 3 on the day. And he's going to ground out to short. I mean, to second. Oh, yeah, with a five runner, he's definitely going to try to score. Will the defense try the auto out at first? He's a speedy runner, so I'm going to assume they're going to let the run score. I know it's bottom of the seventh, but. And right, I'm going to replay this and bring the infield in. All right, so when you go from playing Stratomatic, who automatically does everything to this game, you have to forget sometimes that I, I have to play as the other team too. So, all right, so we're going to have the run. So it's, what are our roles? One, two, and one, two. Okay. All right, let me undo that and try that again. The only thing that might be different is the split rolls, but. Okay, so we'll play the infield then. One, two. No, it's not a, it's not a strikeout though. So let's see, let's try that again. So uh, yeah, one, two, one, two. We'll, avoid, we'll pretend that strikeout didn't happen because it didn't actually happen. So he is going to try to. No, he's not going to try to score now because the infield played in. All right. So they hold the runner out there first. So Jackie Jensen, two for two up now. A chance to put the Red Sox ahead. Avoids the strikeout. And grounds out to short to end the inning. So the Red Sox threaten, but can't get the run home. And it remains 4-4 four, four after 7. So Kemmerer will be pinch hit for. Looks like Torgensen was the pinch hitter, so we'll bring in Torgensen. And we'll leave Mambo Cat in there. Oops. All right, so Earl Torgensen will be right back. We have a picture with, I mean, a person without a picture. We can't have that. All right, and we're back. We have a picture of Torgensen now. Steps into the box. Pinch hitting. Just an 091 hitter and 33 at bats. So 
six, four, perhaps he needs stronger glasses. Six, five. Five, three, and that's gonna be a ground. Ooh, it's gonna be a miss by Martin though. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> and again. Let's see, let's check something here. Should be Martin at third. I mean, it should be Melzone at third. Let's see what Melzone's range is. Yeah, he's a three, so he would have missed it anyway. So it happens to have the same range, 310. It's 39, so very similar. So he would have missed, Melzone would have missed it anyway. Hopefully this will fix itself now. Torgerson's going to be on with a double. There we go. So Melzone would have missed that one anyway. So go ahead and run in scoring position. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to leave Mambo Cat in. Strikes him out, Smith. Yeah, he had, he had Smith's number anyway. He was over three with two strikeouts, so he strikes him out for the third time. Nelly Fox over three. And that would advance the runner, but they'll get the shilling over to Reynolds. Two down now. Red Sox one out and getting out of it. West Covington 0 for 2. No, it doesn't strike him out. 5 2. But does get him to fly out to Yastrzemski to end the inning. So we head to the bottom of the eighth. And who did the White Sox have come in? They had Juan Pizarro. Pizarro, will, uh, he's got two righties though. Who else did they have? Turk alone? They might have their closer come in in the eighth. Yeah, they might with the tie game. So Turk alone will come in better than having a lefty coming in. So Turk alone, 7-5 and five record on the season. 11 saves, 2.76 on average, 101 innings pitch, 87 hits, 32 walks, and 50 strikeouts. He'll face Paglaroni, Melzone, and Runnels here in the Red Sox 8th. Possible error on a throw. Nope, oh, fly out to right. Smith makes the catch for out number one. Frank Melzone, one for three with an RBI. Does not strike out. Melzone, very tough to strike out. Flies out to Covington for out number two. So two up and two down in the Red Sox eighth. Pete Reynolds, two for three with an RBI. Draws the walk. So that'll bring up Don Budden. Budden one for two with an RBI, also walked once. As Waller goes out to talk to Lone. And he flies out to land a stand inning. So ahead to the ninth with the score tied at four. Yeah, we'll have Mumble Cat start at one for three. Severs, one for three of the run scored. Oh, 11 is going to be a double. Jim Landis, one for three. And it's likely to be his last batter. No, oh, six, four. And that will bring home the... No, it won't, actually. You're going to hold Severs at third, and that is going to be it. A Mambo Cap. As Pinky Higgins comes in to take him out. We got coming up Lawler. And they're gonna bring in their closer for Nelise. Infield will play in. So Mike Fornelis, 0 and 2 on the season, four saves, 4.90 under an average, 14 and two-thirds innings pitched, 17 hits allowed, four walks and six strikeouts. Infield's playing in for Sherm Waller. Pops one out to third. Melzone calls for it, makes the catch. One down now. 
Infield again will play in for J.C. Martin. Is one for three. Had a two-run double. So infield playing in once again. Possible error. 5-2. Fly ball to right. Jensen will make the catch. And nope, Severs will not. Too shallow for him. So two outs now. Mike Fornalis went out of way of getting out of it. Aparicio, 0 for 3. Okay, that does not strike him out. 1 4. Fights it off for a single and gives the White Sox the lead. So Aparicio, future Red Sox, give the White Sox the lead here in the top of the ninth. Let's see what kind of a hitter alone is. 93. He is their closer, though. And they have a chance, though, to go up by more, so we're going to take out Lone and maybe get Floyd Robinson to pinch hit. So Floyd Robinson comes in. 310 hitter, 11 homers, 59 runs batted in on the season. Trying to add to that one run lead. He'll line out to Seavers. I mean to, uh, not to Seavers, to, uh, Runnels at the end of the inning. All right, so who are the White Sox going to bring in now? They're bringing their backup closer, kind of. Staley to come in now. Actually, it's going to be Hacker, I think. Yeah, Hacker will come in. All right. Just curious what Fornalese hits. Not a bad hitting pitcher, but we will take him out. Red Sox did not use any pinch hitters in the game, so we'll see where the computer picks. Russ Nixon. Yeah, 289 hitter, why not? So Russ Nixon comes in the pinch hit. And once again, they have the Red Sox defense out here. <laughs> Hopefully it's not a range check. So Hacker in there to pitch. Three and three record on the season. Eight saves, three point seven nine earned average, fifty seven each pitch, sixty hits allowed. Only seven walks and forty strikeouts. So six one. And Nixon does not strike out that much strikes out here. Hacker gets in the chase. Chuck Schilling 0 for four comes to the plate. Red Sox down by a run. And that'll be a base hit. So Schilling is on with a one-out single. Tying run is on board. Base running three. Let's see who they have. I'll bring in Billy Harrell to pinch run. Thought I put him in. There we go. So Harrell in the pinch run. He only had one stolen base, so he's probably not going to steal. All right. Carol Hardy up now with a one out and a runner. Let's see. Can he? No, we don't want to bunt. Red Sox not lucky to have him bunt. One, four. Oh, just out of the range of the home run. Six, six. Ah, six. So that is going to be a fly out to left. So two down now as the defense finally gets back to where it should be. So it's up to you. Captain Kali Stremski, hitless on the day. Can he come through? Fans are on their feet here at Fenway Park. Hacker looks in for the sign from Waller. Here's the windup in the pitch. 
Welcome to the rookie here. And it's going to be hit. And two, three. Ah, 19. Too high a roll. And Yastrzemski flies out to center to end the game. So the Red Sox fall to the White Sox now. And drop a game. So now they are 15 and 18, which is exactly where they were at this point of the season. As they fall to the White Sox five to four. White Sox had the Red Sox number six and two against the Red Sox, as you can see so far. Take a look at the box score. So Frank Bauman pitches five and two thirds innings, gives up eight hits, four runs, all of them earned, two walks and one strikeout. Kimmer, one and a third innings pitched, allowed one hit. Turk Lone gets the win. One inning pitched, one walk. Warren Hacker gets the save. One inning pitched, one hit allowed, one strikeout. For the Red Sox, Mambo Kett gets the loss, now two and six. Eight innings pitched, eight hits allowed, five runs, all of them earned. One walk and six strikeouts, and a surrounded one homer. That being the game winner. Fornilis pitched an inning, allowing one hit. For the White Sox, Al Smith 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Nelly Fox 0 for 4. Wes Covington 0 for 3 with a run scored and a walk. Roy Severs 2 for 4 with two runs scored and a double. Jim Landis 2 for 4 with a run scored. Sherm Lala 2 for 4 with a, two runs batted in and a run scored. J.C. Martin 1 for 4 with a couple of RBIs and a double. Uh, Baricio 1 for 4 with a RBI. Bauman 0 for 2. Uh, Kemmer did not get in that bet. Torgensen, the pinch hitter, was 1 for 1 with a double. Lone did not get a at bat. Hacker did not get in that bat. And Floyd Robinson was 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. For the Red Sox, Chuck Schilling 1 for 5. Carol Hardy 1 for 5 with a double. Yastrzemski an 0 for 0 for 5. Average drop now to 2 0 3. So. He struggled today. Jackie Jensen, two for three with two runs batted in and a walk. Pagaroni, one for four. Frank Melzone, one for four with an RBI. Pete Runnels, two for three with a run scored in an RBI. Also walked once. Don Budden, one for three with an RBI. Walked once. Mambo Kett was one for three for, at the plate. Four notes did not get in a bat. And Russ Nixon, 0 for one with a strikeout. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, so four, five, six, seven, and eight hitters. So four through eight hitters, all for the Red Sox are all hitting over 300. 352, 318, 359, 321, and 327. So definitely, definitely the Red Sox are producing offensively. They're just not, their pitching is just. Well, their pitching is their pitching. What they've done for what they did for the season, pretty much, which is why their record is um, fifteen and eighteen. So, all right. So, I think we're gonna maybe do this this have this season be a quest for five hundred. As I think if they were seventy six and eighty six. So, like Al Red Sox fan is doing with one of his seasons using uh, out of the park baseball for the Red Sox, we're gonna do a quest for five hundred. Uh, in the Kyle Yastrzemski career replay here for his rookie season. So again, this is game number 33. Red Sox fall to the White Sox by a score of 5-4. to four. So take care, God bless, and we will see you in the next game, which I believe is also against the White Sox. Bye-bye now.